Okay. First screen. Okay, good afternoon. Um, my name is Harriet Chan. I'm a volunteer uh, for the San Francisco Bay Area chapter of Better Investing. So I'm here this afternoon to assist Better Investing in a nationwide campaign to design to encourage individuals of all backgrounds to start a lifetime of investment in stocks and mutual funds. Next screen. Okay. So my name is Harriet Chan, and this is my email, skcots at yahoo.com. That skcots is the word stock spelled backwards. Okay. Um, little thing about uh, the cooperation from Value Line. Uh, it is copyright, so um, no reproduction of the survey is permitted without the written permissions of the publisher. I also have um, the next slide for a disclaimer. I just want to tell everybody that what I'm saying now, the presentation is for education purposes, and it's not intended uh, to be a recommendation uh, to purchase or sell any of the stocks or mutual funds. Okay. Next screen. On our agenda, what are we gonna cover? Um, I'm gonna tell you something a little bit about better investing, how to access value line, and what is value line? Um, the parts of value line that we're covering is probably uh, most significant in section one and three, and the co company report, and then we'll have a summary and questions. The class goal is to show you how to access the value line at the San Francisco main library. Um, we're gonna highlight uh, where to find and identify parts of the value line. And I'll share some brief description of some of the key points, okay? Um, and due to the time limit, we won't really go into details, but I definitely will show you online where you can get more information. Uh, next screen. Oh, uh, we are better investing. We are a nonprofit organization. We're voluntarily volunteer based. So, and we're member driven. Um, we, there's no commissions. We don't recommend stocks uh, recommendation. Uh, our website is www.betterinvesting.org. So I've been a volunteer for Better Investing since 1999. So I've been doing this for over 20 years. Okay, uh, next screen. Our mission is basically uh, to create successful long-term investors through education, resources, tools, and support. And so I always tell people, if you have a question, email me. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have, okay? Uh, next screen. Uh, core Insight. This is Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch was a famous mutual fund um, A mutual fund, a mutual fund person of the Magellan Fund from Fidelity, and he said that you know everybody had the brain powers to follow the stock market, and that you only need fifth grade math. Um, I strongly disagree with that because I, you only need third grade math because basically all you really need is to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and do the percentages. Um, and I know that because I volunteer to teach third grade math, uh, to eight year olds for five years. <laughs> and I've been investing for over 40 years. Um, so, uh, it's really, it may seem daunting, but actually when you, you, you will find out that the math is not difficult at all. Next screen. Okay. To get to the online version of Value Line, you need to be have, well, uh, 
right now with COVID, you have to have you have to be a resident of San Francisco, um, and you can apply online to get uh, a library card for the San Francisco Public Library. Hopefully, when things clear up, um, people living outside of San Francisco will be able to get a library card. I know I did uh, many, many years ago, and I had my investment club all go down to the San Francisco Main Library um, to get a library card so that afterwards we could use Value Line uh, online, which has made it very, very convenient. Okay, um, next line, next. Value line uh, comes in a hard copy. So back in the days, we used to have to go to the library and check it out from the reference section. And we would be allowed an hour, uh, at a, uh, allocated an hour to use the value line hard line. Um, this, is a, this screen shows you all the libraries that has the hard copy. Now in the main library, um, it's located at the page desk on the fourth floor. So there's the picture of that page desk and it's over to the right uh, uh, shelf on the right. Um, but you can find them, you know, uh, at Sunset, Richmond, uh, Noe Valley Mission. So there's a lot of libraries that have the value line hard copy. So um, and I think that even though it's nice to have the online, I think that if, if you can go to your local library and sit down and take a look at the hard copy, you will learn a lot from that too. Um, so, uh, okay, let's go back to the online. Um, oh, do we have any questions right now before we get started? Okay, good. Okay, next screen is how to log on to the San Francisco Public Library. So you type in uh, sfpl.org, okay? And what you wanna do is click on that research and learn. Next screen. And when you get to the next screen, what you want to go to is the articles and database. Next screen, okay. And then you click on the V in the, in the letters there for value line. Next screen. So that pops up right there at the very top, say value line, and you click on value line. Next screen. And so this, you get, uh, to the log on to the San Francisco article and database. And uh, you can see here that it remembers my ID and type in your password, press enter. Um, the La San Francisco library has greatly improved this website. So it works very, very smoothly now. Uh, okay, next screen. So this is the next screen. So this is the front page of Value Line. So under the tab of the Browse and Research, okay. Um, okay, everything I'm sh I'm sharing with you today, it's in the Investment Education section, a little bit over in the red arrow there. Okay. So if you want to go back and read something, uh, this is where you would go and it will take you and give you, there's a glossary that tells you everything that I'm gonna tell you today, okay? Um, the other thing that I wanna mention is the Dow 30 and it's free. The Dow 30, now what is the Dow 30? Dow 30 is the 30 blue chip companies of the, of the US. And why is it called blue chip? I believe it came from the poker chip, that the blue chip is the highest uh, value chip there is. So they call it a blue chip. And that's how it somehow it got attached to the Dow Jones 30. 
Um, it's a great place to start. If you're new, these are large companies that makes money, okay? Uh, so that's a great place to start because when you're buying companies, a company's main purpose is to make money. So you wanna buy a company that makes money. And these are large company, they have deep pockets. And so you wanna be, uh, you wanna reduce your risk as much as possible, okay? And you wanna have to make sure that you have a good experience, okay? Um, I also wanna mention that there's good, I noticed that the brokerage firms, whether it's Fidelity or Charles Schwab or Tasty Work, they are really beefing up their education sites. So use that as a resource too. Next screen. So we're gonna do, uh, uh, type in the, the company symbol, J and J, and we're gonna press enter. And what, next screen. And so it will bring up Johnson and Johnson. And uh, value line is a report card on a company. Um, it does fundamental analysis. And what we mean by fundamental analysis is that it looks at the company's books to see how well they are doing. Uh, in fundamental analysis, PE is very important and future PE is more important than trailing. So it's all about the future of the company. So what exactly is PE? P stands for the current price of the company, of the stock, and E stands for the earning. So we're comparing the price of the stocks to the earnings of the company, okay? And so you could change the earnings. It could be, you know, the last 12 months or the future, uh, the next 12 months in the future. So looking at that is very important. Now, according to this, the last price on Johnson & Johnson were on 10-26-2020 was $143.97. The trailing PE is 16.7. Um, that's for the last six months. It is important to figure out the forward PE. So the forward PE means the future earnings. What is going to make uh, next year, okay, or two? And brokerage firms have those estimated earnings and growth rates um, in their data. And you might, uh, I know in Fidelity, it would be under key statistics. You know, when you're doing research stocks, it would be under key statistics. So key statistic would be kind of like a buzzword that you would need to know. Um, relative PE last year uh, here says is at 0.84. Um, FY stands for fiscal year, okay? Um, so what the, the relative PE ratio is saying is 0.84 is comparing Johnson & Johnson against the value line, 1,700 stocks. Uh, so you can see that J&J &J is not a hot stock. It's rather a dull and boring stock, but it's a steady eddy stock. Dull and boring has its appeal. And I will be doing um, the dividend uh, class on the 20th. And uh, it's really surprising uh, uh, the numbers that Johnson Johnson comes up with. Um, now, the current yield, percent yield of this current stock based on the current price is 2.78%. Now that's better than any money market fund that I could find out there. And um, the other thing about Johnson & Johnson, it has increased its dividends since 1963. Um, they are a member of the aristocrat dividend companies, companies that have increased their dividend for the last 25 years. Um, stories on, uh, uh, I did, I did a, I did a uh, class back in 1998 
And uh, I started the spreadsheet saying that if you had invested $50 a month uh, starting in 1980, um, and that would be $600 a year, and how much would you would have accumulated in 18 years? And it, the number came up to be uh, uh, over $100,000. So I thought that was very impressive for just investing $50 a month uh, for 18 years. Um, the market volatility has increased the last few years. And so now the market swings more widely. So figure out how you can use volatility to your advantage. Okay. Now, in blue, uh, there is uh, next screen. Let's go to the next screen. Uh, if you click on on the orange arrow there, uh, if you click on it on the right side, it says 18th month explain. Okay, it will give you a. Uh, it will give you an explanation uh, and it explains what the target date that they think that the stock was gonna be. Currently it's at 143 and they think that this stock could go up to uh, $224. So this was, this class when I first taught it was in October and now it is is uh, April and currently the, the stock right now is at 160. So, um, but the stock market's been going up, um, even though with this pandemic, uh, uh, the stock market is still doing well. Okay, next screen. Okay, the red box, safety. This is uh, Johnson Johnson ranks number one. Okay, there's only about a hundred stocks that has a ranking of number one. Okay, um, the average price stability index and the financial ratings, uh, it goes one through five. One is the highest and five is the lowest. So if you're a newbie and you're just getting started, you wanna stick to the ones that has a safety rating of one or two, okay? So out of the 1700 stocks that value line tracks, 100 are rated number one, 300 are rated number two, 900 are rated number three, and 300 are rated number four, and 100 is rated number five, okay? You wanna avoid um, the 300 and the 100. I would stay with the 100 and 300 and the ones and two, right? Because you want, if you're the first first time out investing, you want to have a positive experience. So to start with something safer, okay? The green box, um, the timeliness is number two. Now it tells you that it was upgraded on 1023. Um, so number two means that there are another 299 other stocks that is rated number two. Now the purple one is the financial strength box. And the rating for Johnson and Johnson is an A plus plus. There are nine grades: A plus plus, A plus, A, B plus plus, B plus, B, and a C plus plus, C plus, and a C. The lower grades is reserved for companies with financial difficulties, so you want to stay away from those. Okay, so. Also, what you see with Johnson & Johnson, you could see that the sales has been increasing. The cash flow is increasing and the debt is going down and the return on the capital is up, okay? The percentage return to the shareholder is going up, okay? So that's, and the upper margin is up. So cash flow is very important and you must have liquidity because uh, even on a personal level, when I improved my liquidity in my investing, I was able to uh, increase my total return. 
Okay, so this goes back to Johnson & Johnson having enough money to increase their dividends every year for the last 63 years. So, okay, next screen. Okay, the arrow shows you, this is show. When you click on that, uh, what's hidden behind there is an explanation of what those things mean. Okay, next screen. And then to hide it back, you would just click on the arrow again, this is high rating definition, okay? Just a little bit about how to maneuver around. Okay, next screen. Okay. Articles. Uh, here over on the top, it says articles and the ranking and rating change. Okay. Um, three to five year projection. Um, you need to ask yourself when you read these numbers, do you like what it's telling you? And you need to learn how to form your own opinion. Um, so read the uh, commentary. It's about 400 words in here. Um, click on read more. Okay, the green arrow there. And um, it records the rank and rating changes from technical to timeliness and earning predictability. So, um, and also in regards to next screen, the, the articles, read all of them. Uh, I really highly recommend that you read them all. Uh, you get a better view of the company. Um, on this particular report, it was a positive report, but I went back and looked at the, the middle one and the report was not so positive. So um, even Johnson Johnson's biggest was big company, you know, sometimes it, uh, it will put out good reports and bad reports. Sometimes they miss their sales, sometimes the sales increase or something happens, um, you know, uh, Johnson & Johnson is being sued because of the uh, uh, baby powder issue. Uh, so they do have some liabilities and some risks involved. Okay, valuation, next screen. Okay, so, you know, all of these, there's a lot of numbers in here. Um, the valuation, the per share data, uh, compare the data. Um, if you see something in italic, like right here on the left-hand side there, if it's italic, it is an estimate. So you could see that for cash flow per share, which is the second line, it's going to be $10.30. And for 2020, it was $11.85. Those are projected numbers. Anything italic means that it's an estimate. So when you see these things, like you see things increasing, um, you know, you have to determine uh, what is the company doing that's doing right? Okay, um, dividends been increasing since 1963. What does that mean to you? Um, are you looking for income? Um, given the dividend data, $50 a monthly investment for 24 years uh, is $14,300. But that generated $22,000 of dividend and reinvesting the dividend um, into the J&J &J stock would, give you, would have given you a value of $190,000. Is that impressive to you? Um, so, you know, you, when you're getting all of this information, you have to think about it and see if that looks good to you or not. Um, Okay, the long-term growth uh, is growing. Long, I'm sorry, the long-term debt is growing. And the reason why the debt is growing is because the interest rate is so low. Um, so that's the time when uh, you need to borrow the money because the interest rate is so low. We're practically down to you know 1% or 0%. Okay, next screen. Um, here's the sales graph, okay? Uh, numbers are in italic. So again, it's uh, projecting for 2021. So it's estimated, so it's an italic. And over on the right-hand side, 
uh, you see some numbers there, total returns with competitors. And some of it looks impressive. So when I look at this, I will go check out those companies too. Um, just want to make sure, you know. Uh, okay, next screen. The annual rate of change. Um, I'm very much into uh, the growth companies, so I'm very interested in looking at the future growth rate. Um, the past performance is already priced in. Okay, Johnson and Johnson is a large company, and general expectation is about seven percent for a large company. Small companies are more agile, but their finances are not as robust. So J and J is a global company. And it operates in over 120 countries. Um, having a strong or weak dollar will have an effect on the bottom line. Okay, 2019 um, changed the adjusted earnings. Uh, it went from 685 to 865, and that's why you see that big spike. Um, and what happened, I had to do some research on it. And apparently Value Line decided to make the adjustment for the 2019 only and did not change the uh, numbers uh, for previous years. So that's why you see the spike. Uh, so going forward, uh, it should be consistent with the way they refigure out the 2019 earnings. It was an accounting tax issue. Next square. Okay, here's the thing about dividends. One year dividend, uh, six to eight and a half percent increase in dividend. So the question I always look at this is how many are you getting, how many people are getting a six to eight percent raise uh, in your salary? So getting a six to eight percent in the money that you put away. In, uh, in investing is a pretty good increase. Uh, Social Security increased uh, was 2% last year. And so an average of 7.5% increase looks good. And with a history that they could sustain this dividend increase. Okay. Next screen. Okay, the score rating. Um, I found this in a better investing magazine. And this is one way to screen stocks is to add up the score, the price stability score, the price growth persistence score, and their earnings um, predictability. And it must score 200 or higher. It's, if it does not score 200 or higher, pass, go on to, a, to find another company. Um, I like the earning predictability near 100 um, or at 100. Uh, if the price stability is lower, it means there will be buying opportunities for me. So that's part of buying on the dip. Uh, if the financial strength is good, um, the earning predicted is good, but the price stability, that means the stock prices fluctuates, it, it creates an opportunity to buy it when it goes down. Okay. Uh, next screen. Uh, so if you could scroll down and read about the industry data, okay, click on read more down on the bottom, it's in uh, teal color. Um, Really, this is a must read. Get an insight about the industry that J and J is in. Um, the teal box in the middle it talks about uh, the insider transaction. It tells you about who is buying and selling in upper in upper management. This data used to take up to thirty days, but now it only takes a few days. Okay, as you can see. Uh, over here for institution buyers, many mutual funds and pension fund owns J and J. Uh, there's only a problem when the market crash. Uh, 
People call in to redeem for redemptions, and this may cause tax issues and valuation flux in the short term. Okay. Next screen. Um, the business description. In this particular one, um, there wasn't any, um, there wasn't a lot of, of data there. And my suggestion is just go directly to the Johnson & Johnson website and they have a history um, and re-up on Johnson & Johnson. Uh, they were established in 1885. And the first thing that they uh, sold was a sterilized gauze pad. Um, oh. So uh, it's very interesting to, to look at the website too. Okay, technical ranking. Uh, the technical ranking is number two. And if you click on the show, okay, it'll display of the technical, the history of the technical ranking. Okay, the orange box, okay, uh, tells you, uh, it provides you two years of reports in the PDF file. Okay, all right. Do we have any questions? This is a good stopping point before we go on to the PDF file. Um, Harriet, there's a question from Dave. Does Value Line only have 1,700 stocks? And then he has some 100 plus 300 plus 900 plus 300 plus 100 equals 1,700. Right. And more than 1,700 public companies? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, there are, um, I believe it's close to 8,000. Okay. The 1,700 that value lines cover um, is based on, uh, it would rep the 1,700 stock would represent about over 90% of the stocks that are traded. Okay. So it covers the majority of the stocks that are traded. There's a lot of companies that are listed, but they don't trade very often. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, Any more? Huh? Yeah. Any more? Dave, did, did that answer your question? You can unmute yourself for a minute. Uh, I, I, I think so, but I've never heard of a thing of a public company that's not traded. I mean, that doesn't really sound like it's a public company then. Well, I, I mean, as far as volume is concerned. It may oh, be, okay. yeah, it's, it's you know, it, do they have the volume? Okay. Even though it's a publicly traded, it doesn't have a lot of volume. Not, not a lot of people are trading it. Okay, okay. yep. Yeah. And Dave, did that answer your second question? Why is the sum of the number of companies with a safety rating 1,700 based on the numbers Harriet mentioned? Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Th those numbers, I just added up the numbers she said for each um, each different rating number. And that's why, where I got the 1,700. But now I understand. It's just those are like the big companies, I guess. Right. Okay, and then a question from Ming. Do you have the latest report? Um, Value Line up, updates their reports, I think, daily. Isn't that right, Harriet? No, Value Lines updates like um, if we, well, the next slide that we're going to go to, there's a date on it, and it the cycle is 13 weeks. And what the 13 weeks means is that when you look at the PDF file, it'll give you a date of when that report is. And basically it's every three months. So if you add three months to it, that will be when the next report will come out. Um, and then Linda asks, how do you find an investment club where you might share doing this kind of research on stocks? I can send her the link for um, better investing. Yes. Good one. It's a good nonprofit and they're active. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've got that one covered. Period. Okay. That's it on the questions. Okay. Let's go on to, okay. You're there already, Laurie. Okay. So here is the format 
of the PDF file for Johnson and Johnson. Okay, so this is the hard copy, and you could see it. The new online format is much easier on the eye. Uh, this hard copy uh, format in the beginning was very intimidating to me because it was just so much data and it was very stressful that I had to figure out this page. <laughs> but eventually I did, I, you know, discipline, I persevere and I'm being patient with myself. I did figure it out, okay. And down, David, right down on that very corner, like this one says August 14th, 2020. Okay, so three months, August, September, October, November. So the next report would have been about November 14th. And then, you know, it's like every three months. Um, that's how you calculate. Okay, next screen. So what I did was uh, I tried to map out the online version to the PDF data. Okay, um, so here in the statistical array in the per share data. Okay, now the way the online version, they kind of combined it uh, oh, under the PDF format. They have the per share data up here um, on top with the handle kind of like, it looks like Nebraska. Uh, and then the bottom half would be company data. So you can see over on the right-hand side, the first thing it says is like, of oh, sales per share, okay? And down on the company data, it'll say sales, okay? Um, so that's the, that's the difference. Uh, sometimes you want it per share and sometimes you want uh, the company data. Uh, okay, next screen. So the annual rates, this is the orange squares, okay? The estimates from 2023. Um, if you look at the estimate uh, for the annual rates, 2020 estimate from 17 to 19 to 23 to 25. That was very uncommon. Value line was the only one that was doing this. Um, and it was very, very valuable to me um, because if, if you're new, it was hard to make a guess. So here, Value Line was telling you that they expected sales to grow by 5%, that the cash flow was going to grow by 8.5%, um, uh, and earnings going to grow at 10%, and dividends were going to grow at 7.5%. So that's why I was saying, wow, you know, if dividends growing at seven and a half percent, that's pretty good because I definitely, when I was working, my raises weren't seven and a half percent, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, but things have changed now. Um, like in Better Investing, where we do the stock selection guide. Uh, there's many sources available now. Morning Stars will give you an estimate now. Uh, Warriors give you an estimate. Uh, Finance Yahoo will give you an estimate. So there's a lot of places and uh, your brokerage firm will give you an estimate of what the sales and uh, uh, dividends uh, uh, sales going to be. So now it's much more readily available. The other thing that I really want to mention was uh, the footnotes. The smaller the print, the more important you read it. <laughs> and uh, over to the right-hand side, where it says the company strength. Remember that was a part where I says you, you add up the numbers to 200, and if it doesn't, you pass. And so this is where it is on the PDF file. So you see that 185 and 75 there. So, um, and, with, and if I'm, looking at a company that I don't know anything about, the, the square that I will look at is that uh, light blue square. It's called business, and it will tell you something about the company. And so, you know, if I come up with a conglomerate and I go, well, I know it's a conglomerate, but what does it do? When I look up value line, this is where I would go. I would look up the business section and, re and give me uh, uh, I will start from there, reading up about their business. 
Okay, next screen. Okay, back to uh, talking about the Dow Jones 30, that it's uh, the, the, the reports for the Dow Jones 30 is available for free. Um, and you get that when you first sign on to the front page of Value Line, and you can click on Value Line uh, and the Dow Jones 30. So this is also a good place for you to uh, consider looking for a large company that has uh, good liquidity and is profitable. And it's a good place to start looking for a quality company. Okay, next screen. Um, the other place is, you know, again, back to the beginning of value line, you can do browse and research and there's a tab called find ideas. Okay, so um, those are resources that you can take a look at. The fine ideas, uh, you can look for preset screens. Next screen. Okay. Click. Next screen. Okay. So if you click on the screen, um, under fine ideas, you can see the arrow that says sc screener. Uh, when you click on that, next screen, uh, these are the preset screens, uh, basic criteria. Um, so whatever you're interested in, next screen. Um, I clicked on conservative stock, rank number one for relative safety. Okay, so if you click on that, then they'll give you a listing of those stocks. Okay, and next screen. Here's the safety ranking. So if you want to look at a stock screener that lists all the stocks that are ranked number one or number two, that's what you do. You click on number one and it will give you uh, a listing. Okay. If you want to um, do the rating and the ranking, you can click on that. And when you click on that, you get to the next screen. Uh, okay. Are we on the same page here? Oh, excuse me. I lost myself here. Uh, ranking. Okay. Here. Okay. So rating and ranks. Okay. Uh, there's an arrow here. If you look at the screen when you get online, you can scroll. Uh, if you have a touch screen computer, it, you know you can scroll, or you can go to the bottom of the screen and scroll that way. Okay, because there's a lot more data over hidden on the side there. Next screen. So the estimated projection. Okay, screen. Uh, So do take the time to look at these things um, and look at the data. This really should take uh, quite a bit, of your t a bit of time. So you might wanna allocate some time or allocate a certain day or a certain hour so that you can spend some time uninterrupted to go through this kind of stuff. Okay, next screen. Uh, earnings and projection. So here they give you like a three to five year projection. Um, dividend. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Harriet, which page are you on? Um, um, I'm on 46. You're on 46. Hold on. I'm on 46. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> good, good, keep, keep on. Yeah. Estimated and projection. And so on that screen, you'll find the uh, dividend, what they're gonna project the yearly dividends gonna be. So this is kind of very nice to see, you know, especially if you're um, older like me and I'm looking for income, uh, this is a screen that I, I will use a lot um, because I, I like those seven to 8% increases because my social security check is only going up by 1%. <laughs> okay, all right, next screen. Uh, profitability, 
So again, profit margin is really important. So you want to check out these companies, uh, check out what their margins going to be. Uh, again, there's a lot of data and there's a lot to digest. So give yourself some time uh, to go through this stuff. And again, if the, you know, profitability, gross, gross, gross margin, operating margin, operating margin estimate, percentage of net profit margin. If you don't understand any of these terms, go to the education um, tab and they have a glossary. So you can go there and find a definition. And um, I also tell people, well, I says, now that you have your phones, you can always type in um, uh, or ask series about, you know, the definition of any terms you don't like. So it's very convenient now uh, to get the definition. Uh, next screen, uh, safety ranks. Okay, profitability, annual rates. Okay, um, so here, when you're looking at the annual rates, uh, it'll break it down. You can see multiple companies, you know, what the growth rate's gonna be. Uh, so you can compare apples to Albert Labs, to uh, you know, Amgen, to, you know, Allstate or whatever. So, I mean, it's really, sometimes I go, wow, Allstate, their growth estimated growth rate is 30%. That kind of piques my interest and I might, you know, check into that. Uh, so there's a lot of information and a lot of resources uh, to go through. Next screen. Okay, the industry. So here's the listing of the industry. Um, and uh, if you're, you know, there's, probably over uh, close to a hundred industry that you can look into. And um, I would say stay, uh, and they have the industries ranking too. And I would say stay in the top third. If you're a new beginner, uh, a new to investing, stay with the top 30 industry. Uh, just, just be safe about it. Okay, so uh, next screen, industry. Okay, here on the dashboard, okay? And it will point to you uh, the quick links um, for value line. So you can go to the summary and index uh, section, uh, options, all of that. You see this all in teal, teal color. If it appears in gray, that means uh, the system has logged you off and then you have to log back in. Okay. Um, so <laughs> took me a little while to figure that one out. Uh, okay. So here, next screen, we're going to see a hard copy of the front page of value line. And there's a lot of information on this page. Um, this is the summary and index page. Um, if you want to see it online, it's just a very long document. So you can just scroll down the page that you want or you need. Okay. Um, the, take the time and look over this page. The top half of the summary and index currently, um, summary and index contents and screen. A lot of the ideas that you can check out, the ranking, the dividends grow. Um, you know, if I'm looking for a dividend stock, I could be looking for uh, dividends, uh, growth, three to five year potential, the highest annual return, low PE, high PEs, uh, many ideas. Uh, you just need to figure out uh, a discipline so you can allow yourself some time so that you can review, okay? And look at the numbers and try to make sense of it. Um, like the red arrow here, the median estimate 18 month appreciation potential to target price is only at 15%. This kind of tells you that the stock market is pretty high. Um, the stock market, confirms that. 
And a lot of information that you think uh, that you have, try to think about the implication. So it's very important uh, that if you're new to investing, you start to you start out with a quality stock. Okay. The bottom half, next screen. This is the bottom half of that summary and index page. And what it does is it lists out the industry in alphabetical order, okay? And so I said, same thing, stay in the top 30% to reduce your risk, okay? Um, and then scroll down, next page. This is page two on hard copy. If you're doing this online, you would just scroll down and it will list the stock in alphabetical order, okay? So you can see that's on page two and it starts out with the alphabet A through AK, okay? And I found that when I first started out uh, looking at value line, this page was very important. The numbers um, was very important uh, but it took time to understand it and to compare it. And that's what I like seeing this page because I use those numbers to compare. So now this is, um, this. if you use it online, you'll be scrolling from page two all the way down to page 23. So it's quite a long um, uh, list of stocks, okay? And... The next screen, I want to say on the bottom of each page, um, this is the footnotes. Read the footnotes. Um, there's different footnotes. Um, next page, different ones on different pages. And I would say, get read those footnotes, get familiar with them. Okay. Okay, so this is the last page. This is on page 23. So you can see here over on the right hand side, it says it's WY through ZY. And it's on page 23. And again, you had footnotes down there. So, um, so basically the online version lets you scroll down as much as you like. The hard copy, you'll have to turn to pages. Um, but I think that, uh, that Value Line did a great job putting this thing online. Okay. Um, next page. Okay, stocks with three to five year uh, price potential. That's on page 32. Okay. And guess what? You can find this also online under fine ideas and you look at screeners and over to the right side of the column, uh, you will see uh, earnings, projected earnings per share. Any growth rate, any growth in double digit is appealing to me. Uh, using the rule of 72, if your portfolio is growing by 10%, it means your portfolio will double in 7.2 years, okay? Um, this is a lot of information uh, for new investors. So really allocate some time. So, uh, but you'll really have a chance to secure your future. Um, when I taught this class in person, uh, when we rented a classroom, it took me three and a half hours to get through this. And I only did the PDF file. I did not do the online version. Um, so uh, please, you know, allocate yourself some time to log on to invest um, in yourself and go to the education tab uh, as often as you can. Okay. Next screen. Okay. Oh, okay. Say what I want to say. So this one's what I was talking about. I like um, projecting. I like to see any dip, like this one here says review uh, allergen uh, technology. Uh, it's going to grow 10%. I like to look at any growth company that grows double digit returns. Okay. 
So, okay, next. So value line, oh, tell, let me tell you about value line. Value line was uh, started in 1931. Um, it has a way of develop a method of evaluating stocks. So um, they don't take any money from any company. Um, in 1965, they developed the timeliness ranking system. They have, they hire about 70 uh, analysts there. Um, and a lot of the, the way they do things, all the numbers in value lines are developed by the analysts. Next, um, they are published weekly. So they cover 1,700 stocks, 96 industry, uh, food processing, telecommunication, um, companies are categorized into industry. Every page is revised every 13 years. And then the re uh, begins again. Now they do, when something happens, um, they do also issue supplemental reports. Next screen. Okay, so in summary, um, you can get a San Francisco, uh, but right now you have to reside in San Francisco and you can apply for that library card online. Uh, and that way you can access uh, Value Line uh, online. Uh, I heard that the Potolith library is gonna be open soon. Um, so that's great. Um, you know, you can get value line uh, access anytime, anywhere. So that's great. Uh, value line report access is fast, easy, and it's free. Um, if you buy this uh, value line report, I believe it runs about $600. So the value, so the library provides you uh, provide it to you for free. So it's a great resource. Okay, this is the end. Um, thank you for attending. Um, oh, I do want to mention that uh, Better Investing have a 90 day free membership. Um, we don't ask for credit cards. So but you know, we have a lot of webinars that you can um, take for free. Um, so if you're interested in a 90 day free membership, you can email me and I'll send you, I'll email you back the form. You can send in the form or you can do it online. Okay. My next class will be April 20th, Dividend Investing 101. And the same time from two to four is an introduction to dividend investing. Any questions? There, there are a few, Harriet. Um, oh. Let's see. Um, so there was a there was a comment from somebody that because um, I was sharing the PDFs that are on the database and or in the database that are easy to access. And right. people were saying they're grayed out. They were looking. Um, they were looking in the dashboard, if, but if you go to the menu at the top on the black line that says investment education, and then you go to the tools guide and click on that, then Value Line has posted a bunch of PDFs on how to use the database that are useful. Um, this person was offering that they have a lot of videos on YouTube, and I'm saying as they also have PDFs that you can access through their database as well. Um, right. Let's see. There's a question about, I'm, I'm not, somebody wants to know what, which version we subscribe to. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'll find out. Um, there's a question, what is the best way to find the stocks that did best in the 1970s? Repeat the question. What is the best way to find out the stocks that did the best in the 1970s? Ooh. Uh, well, uh, how do you define best in regards to profit or sales or? Um, Dave, do you want to unmute yourself and explain what you're asking? 
Um, best in terms of um, the price of the stock. Just, uh, I was just thinking in the 70s, there was a lot of inflation. And so if we're gonna get inflation in the future, it, it'd be interesting to know what did well back then for that reason. Ah, ah. I don't think Value Line has that information, but I think somebody did uh, share some site out there. You'd have to Google it and find it. I don't think Value Line covers that kind of stuff, though. No. Yeah. I um, thought Value Line went all the way back to 1931. Yeah, it started in 1932. Um, so should, shouldn't they have the prices going back that far? Uh. Well, it would be on it would be on a hard copy. It's actually they do have it, but you have to have the premier subscription, and we don't have that. But they they do. Um, I don't know. We had this question a, a few years back, so I'm racking my memory. <laughs> um, I did. We did try and look into getting the history. Um, aspect of the database, but we, it, I guess it didn't happen because we don't have it, but they do, you would have to pay for that service. You might want to write to them and see if there's some way to access that information. They do, they do um, collect it. They have it, but we just don't, we, we don't pay for that part of the subscription. So is there some other thing, like one of the other things that you do have that would have that information? Um, that's a good question. We can, uh, Lori and I can uh, research that and get back to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Um, so then Linda has a question from your years of experience, Harriet. Yeah. Are there some financial ratios that you feel are most important to look at first, regardless of the company? Um, if you're looking at ratios, uh, PE ratio, I think is the most important. Um, looking at asset ratios is important to me. Uh, you're, you're, you know, but then, uh, you know, when I'm talking about ratio, um, you know, for newbies, it's like, what is that? Basically, it's two numbers you're going to compare. For the PE ratio is going to be the price of the stock, and you're going to compare it to the earnings, and you get a number, okay? Uh, the current the current ratio or the asset ratio, you're looking at the current liability, uh, the current asset versus the current liability, because I want to make sure that a company has more asset than liability. <laughs> Simple little things like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I do look at numbers and see it's how it's balanced. You know, it's just like in your personal um, life. It's like, you know, you have, you want to make sure that uh, your debt load, you know, how much you have in your credit card uh, is a lot less than what you have in your savings and your checking account, you know, so you, you can look at that as a ratio um, because that measures, you know, the risk factor. Uh, and so, and, and at that kind of tells me how well the company is managing their money. So if she's into that kind of like the current, uh, your, your current ratio, your asset ratio uh, would be something I'd be looking at my PE ratio, uh, you know, profit margin percentages wise, those numbers are important. Okay, um, I'm busy answering a question and about to read the next one. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody asked if it will be recorded. Yes, and we'll share that after the program. Um, how to sign up for the April 20th dividends class. Go to the sfpl.org forward slash events to sign up for the, to register for the program. Let's see. And it looks like Lori posted the link in the chat. And Dana provides a suggestion, Yahoo Finance provides historical data going back pretty far. 
Yes, but histor their historical data is stock split adjusted. Okay. <laughs> then um, Gio is suggesting to, to look at the beta. It is a primary indicator for variability versus risk free return. Okay. And that's all the questions so far. Does anybody um, have a question for Harriet that you haven't asked in the chat? Yes. I just missed how you navigated to the um, book version online. To the, to the print version of Value Life? Is that what you're asking? You showed an online copy of the print version, but that is in the value line online? Yes, yes. I uh, missed how to get there. Oh, okay. So like when, when I did the Johnson & Johnson and I scroll all the way down, um, uh, okay, let me see if I can find, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Screen 30. Oh. Lori, is screen, oh, screen 30? Oh, screen 30? Okay. Let's yeah, see. screen 30. Okay. So oh, okay. over here on the, uh, you ah. can, ah, uh, okay. So they actually list you two years uh, worth. Okay. So you can just click on that. So you can see the, uh, when I did this class back in October, I think it was oh, November, uh, you can see the latest one was dated October, uh, August 14th. So you can click on that one. That would be the most current one. And then you can go May 15th if you wanted to. But there's two, uh, two years of data there. I'm sorry, I did not ask that question correctly. I oh. mean, that talked about, oh, it, it 20, the one that had 23 pages. Oh, okay. The one that has 20, okay. Um, and I think it's 50, page 50. It's from Dashboard. You click on Summary and Index. I think that's what she's asking about. I think I, it is. Thank you very right. much. Right. Yeah, and I talked about it. It's just one long, long page. You can keep scrolling and, and you'll get to a list. That, that's it. All right. All Thank stuff. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Harriet, next question is, um, what is the advantage of buying stocks rather than mutual funds? Um, the advantage of buying individual stocks or mutual fund. Okay, with mutual fund, you get um, diversification, that's for sure. Um, but with mutual fund, uh, with stocks, you can buy and sell anytime. Uh, with mutual funds, you usually have to wait until the end of the day. So actually when you sell a mutual fund, you never know what the price is gonna be because you have to wait for the NAV. So it's the net asset value at the end of the day. So they need, the market needs to close and then they figure out what the, you know, what the value of the portfolio is. And then if you wanna sell, then that's the price you get to sell. Um, uh, I started out with mutual funds and it felt safer to me at that point. And, I, and that's what I started out with. Um, and then I gradually, the, once I started to form my own opinion, then I took, then I went to, to individual stocks, okay? But I, I understand that the mutual funds um, and ETFs uh, is a way of instant um, diversification and it's an instant way of when you diversify, you do reduce your risk because you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Thank you, Harriet. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm Dave. I'll look. I'll look for Sarah's question. Hold on. Okay. Is there's a question that I apparently skipped? Lori, do you see what? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, there was a question uh, sent to me directly, but it's for Harriet. Uh, the question is, does Valuline make its money from selling the reports, Harriet? Yes. 
it sells the reports to like the San Francisco Public Library, or it sells it to individuals like me if I wanted to buy it. And I did, um, I did um, subscribe to Value Line for, for a short time. But I found it was much more convenient to use the libraries. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I found the question that we overlooked. Um, this is from Sarah. It, Sarah asks, are there any simulation websites you would recommend to practice investing before using personal savings? Um, well, so you don't have, uh, there's the, the application. Uh, if you want to do that, you can do it with pencil and paper. Really, I, you know, uh, I know that uh, I think that Charles Schwab has a what they call a paper trading system. Uh, OIC, uh, the option industry uh, council used to have one, um, but they have not been able um, uh, Charles Schwab used to supply it for them, but they couldn't uh, agree to continue that. Um, Tasty Work has a paper trailing, but a lot of people would say, oh, I want to do it online, but the actual reality, I said, you don't need, you don't need to, you just need to say, okay, today I want to buy whatever stock. You need to just write down the information, you know, and long as you, what it is is that you're creating a journal and you say on this particular day i want to buy x amount of stocks um and you just record it and once you record it you can always go back you know and look at that piece of paper and compare it to the current price and see how well you did you know so you don't need anything sophisticated you just need to write it down so if you just write it down on a piece of binder paper, you know, it's recorded, you know, and then you go back and you look at it and see how you did in the future. Thank you. Uh, Harriet, there's a question from Elizabeth. How much is a membership to better investing after the 90 days free membership is over? That's a good question. <laughs> um, uh, it, I believe it's 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 a hundred and twenty four dollars or something like that. The reason why I don't know is that I'm a lifetime member, so I paid this uh, the fee many many years ago, um, and so I I have not kept up. But the last time I checked, I think it was a um, I think it, it's it's about a hundred dollars. You know, I think there's there's there, there were talk about it being just under $100 or it's just over $100. But if you email me, I'll, I'll, I'll go dig up the information. And if she email me, I'll send her back the information. Is that okay? okay? All right, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, think or swim by TD Ameritrade. You can Google paper trading options. Oh, she's answering somebody else's question. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, does anyone yeah. else have one for Harriet? I have a comment. <laughs> TD Ameritrade. Uh, TD Ameritrade was a uh, uh, Think and swim. Um, Tom Snoff uh, was a co-developer of Think and Swim, um, and they sold it to TD Ameritrade uh, for seven hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, Tom Snoff has now created his own brokerage firm, and it's called Tasty Works. Okay, um, so. I know that they have a lot of uh, online classes because they're really into education too. Uh, so there's a lot of classes on, on that. 
but they're, um, they like to emphasize options. Okay. Just want to FYI on that. Okay, sounds good, Harriet. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, so I, I guess we have reached our end of our program. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Harriet. Another great program. And um, people are asking if we're sending the recording. Yes, we're also sending the slides. And um, you can send questions to our email address, bizsidetech at sfpl.org. And we'll happily forward them if they are about investing to Harriet. <laughs> so um, thanks for joining us today. And thank you again, Harriet, for your expert um, teachings today. And we will see you at the next program on the 20th. Okay. Bye -bye, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very bye. much.